Hey, fat fish heads. It's time for another edition of the hottest new podcast on all platforms. Fat fish. Sit back and strap yourself in for the wildest ride on the open seas. Now, Lap your fins for the fabulous Fat Fish Brothers, Eric Fish Snyder, and Brad Grunny Grunberg, a.k.a. Snacks. <laughs> Thank you, Dave Linden. God, his voice gets better every show. How are you, buddy? Number 38 here. I'm doing really good. How about you? It's been a while, and yeah. uh, we have a lot to catch up on. And sure. Let's start this off by this, Brad. I just want to pay homage to mm -hmm. we just celebrated Thanksgiving and not everyone goes home for Thanksgiving. That's right. Put your spits on. But just yeah. don't forget those that can't go home. And for our troops that are mm -hmm. out there and all the crap that's going on in the world, we, we appreciate you here at Fat Fish and we hope that our audience does, too. Uh, amen. I mean, being, you know, being, you know, uh, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. Uh, you know, they're selfless people, you know, they give the ultimate sacrifice and they they're away from their families during all the holidays, you know, protecting us. So God bless them. Please stay safe. Absolutely, buddy. And it's been a while. It feels like we haven't done a show in a while. There's been, you know, we we both are under the weather. And uh, well, you know, uh, I want to tell you, I got a restraining order against you. So what happened? It, it lapsed. So I got to get a new one, you know. But uh, yeah, we're all right. Both of us are back and better than ever. You're we a very are better than ever. I missed you. Yeah. I missed hair, you. So hair, talk hair, to hair. me about. Good let's hair. talk about um, the. Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> yeah. I, oh. I'm gonna get a. You get another one. <laughs> I'm allergic to this guy. So. <laughs> I've been sneezing like crazy. Like, what's a good thing? Get all the crap. Boy, the pollen. Yeah, get all the crap out of here. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm excited. I'm excited for your Arizona Wildcats. That are yes. bowl out. One more time. Keep talking. Uh, yeah, we're bowl <laughs> out. We're going to the Alamo, baby. We're going to the Alamo. So I'm very excited. Uh, how about your your UT boys? Where are they going? Well, there's a lot of, you know, talk about anxiety. Yesterday at 9 o'clock in the morning, West Coast time, they announced the four teams that are going to the playoffs. Uh, okay. Michigan, Washington undefeated. Alabama gets in because their boosters will buy anyone off. And then the University of Texas got in. Oh, my school. Yes. So, nice. oh. so excited. The last time we played for a championship, you'll remember this, was that classic game in 2005 between Vince Young and Matt Leinert that went down to the last play at the Rose Bowl. Right. So we have a chance at the championship. I feel bad for all those Florida State fans, Brad. They went 13-0 yeah. and 0 and got snubbed. I know. Thank God this is the last year. If you're a college football fan of the four team format, we go to 12 next year. Are you are you in on that? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm a Pac-10, Pac-12 guy. It's sad for me. I mean, it's sad for you too. You know, we grew up with the Pac-10 and the Pac-10 and Pac-12, and now you know they just dismantled everything. Everybody took the money and they're going places. And it's going to be strange, you know. A lot of these teams have to fly across the country, you know, uh, to play these games. And I don't know how this is all going to work out. But uh, what happened? Let me ask you, what happened? You're smarter than me. What happens to the Pac-12? Do they get other teams to come in? I know they got like four teams or something now. Or? They got two teams left. They got Washington State and Oregon State. And it's sad. <laughs> it's, it's sad that I think about you and I think about you growing up and going to college. And it's sad that Arizona and Arizona State. You know, it's not going to be the same kind of dynamic. Oregon State and Oregon have been played for 102 years and never going to play again unless it's they could schedule, an, uh, you know, a non-conference thing. And I don't understand this. You you hit the nail on the head. What? How does it benefit other than the money, you're right, that a team like USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington go into a powerhouse like the Big Ten and now you're adding Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Penn State, Missouri. These teams are all really good, so you're going to have to play better. Is the money that much? Because it really is about making the playoffs and winning a national championship, isn't it? Yeah. Or is it about the money? It's about the money. I mean, it's sad. It really is about the money. It's the greed, and uh, they just took the money. And, and the Pac-12 made a huge mistake. They signed a 10-year contract. Now, things, yeah, things change in 10 years, you know, 
and uh, so they really blew it. And uh, I don't know; it's just not going to be the same, you know. But uh, we'll see what happens. You know, things can change we'll again. You know, we'll see what we'll happens. See. I'm still trying to. We will do sports. You got some memes. I got to show you some stuff from, from when you were younger. That's great. Um, before we get anywhere, how's your mom and dad doing? I, uh, Brad, I'm going to get a picture. Brad takes his father, Jerry, 91 years old, to get a haircut. The old-fashioned haircuts. If you're our age, you remember you went to a barber shop, it was called, that had a little twirling little sign yeah, of the barber oh, shop. You get a yeah. shave, you get a cut. There's yeah. a movie, a great movie with Ice Cube, where barber shops are where people hang out and, and, and bullshit. And right. Talk about this your experience. And we've done it before, but for our new audience, Talk about taking your 91-year-old father to get to the barbershop. Talk about the dialogue. Talk about the atmosphere. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it's so much fun because dad, uh, you know, he always fights me. And then when we go there, um, pay, um, uh, Peter Mil Melina, he's the best. Medina, he, he owns the place. I've known him probably 25 years. And he finally opened his own place in Beverly Hills. And it's called Deuce's Barbershop. And it's got one of those things outside. And it's so comfortable. You go in and there's about, you know, five chairs and and the sports, you know, they got the big TVs going with the sports and the Dodgers and the Lakers and whoever, you know, whatever time of year it is. And it's just great. And I got a fresh cut and my dad got a fresh cut and then he got a shave and he looks fantastic. I mean, come on. I don't want my dad shaving at 91. You know, no. uh, you know come on. You know, the man, uh, man lived his whole life. He deserves a little pampering. You know, and uh, <laughs> we did. We had a great time. We always have a great time there. And uh, uh, Peter is great. He's really good Good to my dad. And I go see this guy named Alex. He's great. We're, we have two chairs right next to each other. So it's a lot of fun. I think, and, I think, and they have a few open up here in Las Vegas, Brad. I think if you're a man, you could do that with your dad or your son. I think that's a great, I'm going to do that with Max. That's a great experience. Get the yeah. towels on your face. I mean, oh. We, we we sit there and we talk about women going to the, what my mother used to say when she was alive, rest in peace, the beauty parlor, you know, from New York. But women right. go get their stuff done, their nails done, and we we I get I go manicures and pedicures. But I do too. We we have the barbershop as uh, as our you know uh, manscaping tool. Um, Right. Any women go to barbershops? When you're there, is any women walking? Uh, uh, there are women that work there, but no, there's no way. Oh, no, yeah, you know, women come in with their sons. You know, they get them, you know, the these, you know, you know how they take the clippers and they do, you know, the fades and all that stuff. So the mother, like, stands there in front of the chair and tells whoever's cutting uh, their her kid's hair, oh, no, I want that over the, this, way, this way. And they, mom, no, I want it like uh, Joey at school, you know, all that stuff. They're really funny stuff goes on there um but uh yeah my dad really enjoys it and i also take him for manicure pedicures and he loves when they rub his feet you know uh, you know they give you a foot massage at the end but uh i just love hanging out with my dad and uh i love uh i love you know doing things for him because he did so much for me still will you know, you, oh you, absolutely you got a father that's 91 and you're already you know you get you're i know you're 38 with yeah. one leg yeah, you know, around 32. So however old you are, it's still all that life's lessons you get and your brother and your sister and the grandkids. It's, it's that yeah. dynamic, you know, blessed, blessed. Yeah. And, uh, no, I, and and on the, on the week after Thanksgiving, we're, we're hitting the holiday season. And, you know, Brad, Brad drives a lift when and soon he'll be working as an actor, but he drives a lift and it's got to be nuts right now with because with, the traffic. I always notice the traffic between Thanksgiving and Christmas is monumental with people going out and shopping. I thought yeah. maybe with the advent of the internet and you can go on Amazon, still the streets are crazy. You seeing that? No, people are now out because, you know, the COVID, it, it's still around, but it's not as prevalent. And people like to go and touch their items, you know? And I pick up a lot of people, take them, you know, this mall, that mall, this place, the airport. Um, but I have a great story for you. So I, I think I'd have mentioned it on one of our shows, but I'll mention it again. Um, about three weeks ago, I get a call uh, to pick up this woman at the uh, Jewish Community Center on Fairfax. So I pull in, and the security is really tight because of what's going on in the world. And I pull in, this guy goes, all right, uh, Brad, um, I'm going to load this woman in your car. She's really a character, but she lives a couple blocks away. Just let's uh, get her home safe and sound. I go, yes, sir, no problem. You got the best man for the job. 
She gets in my car. Her name is Risa. Uh, and she he goes, uh, November 1st, she's going to be 106 years old. She gets in my car, has her wits about her, starts singing songs from Vienna, Austria. I was, you know how my grandma was my best friend. I just, I'm enamored by her. And and I went by uh, a couple days ago to see her and kind of interviewed her. Um, I, I have some stuff that I want you to show on the show. And she is a real character. And then my buddy, Tony Berlant, he's a trainer and he trains uh, the elderly uh, you know, in his uh, in his gym in Woodland Hills, California, and you know gets the you know, and Re and Risa starts telling my buddy Tony what her workout regimen is. She gets dumbbells. She rides the uh, uh, the pedals. Uh, she plays the piano one hour a day. I mean, she's a hundred and six years old. So I have a new buddy. I have a new pal. Her name is Risa. Uh, so. You're making, you're making, you're more of an impact on her life than she is on yours. Trust me, because that for a woman to be able to get a younger person to talk to her and, and uh, that, that's, that's a, that, that is huge. Speaking of elderly women, I don't know if you watched any of the Dallas Cowboys on, on Thanksgiving. Look how great this woman looks. That's Dolly oh, Parton. I know. 77 years old. I mean, incredible. If you know, I always had a crush on Sophia Loren and Raquel yeah. Welch because they look great. Rest in peace, Raquel Welch, in yeah. their eighties. But that is a good-looking woman right there. You know, yeah. you tell me she's seventy-seven. Yeah, it's work done. But wow, you know, yeah. Uh, Raquel Welch was my favorite. Mother Jugs and Speed. Wow, yeah. is that a great movie? Right? No, it's a played thousand Jugs. years BC when she was in that halter top and the, the loincloth. You know, back in right. seventy-one. You yeah. never dress women looking like that. I mean, it's they it's, don't make movies like they used to, right? They just no. don't. You know, look Rumble. at this. Look at this crap out now. I mean, every you know, Aquaman. It's the same thing over and over and over again. The Marvel movies. I got a comedy I'm trying to sell. I got. Uh, I'm, I, oh, by the way, I'm going to sign. I think I'm going to sign with a new manager. I'm very excited. I met with her yesterday, and uh, she uh, really sweet. And, and we ended up going to high school together. <laughs> she was younger than me, and uh, she you know said all the right things to me. So we'll you see bring up happens. that my manager. One of the greatest movies. I don't, I don't know. If, you have to be have a certain mentality to be a Woody Allen fan. But he did yeah. a film called Broadway. Danny Rose, great. Where movie. he was a manager. Remember that movie when oh, he was a course. manager to like he'd oh, be a manager to, to a blind guy that used to take parrots to the mall. You yeah, know? all the finally free. gets a guy uh, that's a lounge singer, and the actor's name is Nick Apollo Forte. And the guy ends up screwing him. He becomes big. And you see yes. Danny goes back. He was always close with his clients. He would get a guy. He would get like a guy that was a vent ventriloquist. But he would like when the when you saw the guy, the mouth, he would be doing the thing. He just yeah, always yeah, yeah. out lousy act. Let's hope your new manager, I know you're high school with her, can get you some some decent stuff. I'm, I'm you know, I, I don't want to see you as a as a, uh, a contestant on, on, on Star Search, the, the new one. And it's you. <laughs> and we think who what other actors that we don't see a lot, you know. Uh, Grant the, Goody, <laughs> me, me, Grant Goody, Danny Bonaducci, uh, yeah. uh, uh oh, um, who's the guy from uh One Day at a Time? Um, remember uh Valerie Bertinelli's uh, boyfriend? Uh, oh, uh, oh yes, Glenn Scott, Scarpelli, Scott Glenn Columbia, Scarpelli, you know? Glenn Scarpelli, you know, yeah, whatever. I mean, look, who if you get work, you get work, and uh, oh, that's what so as we're going through the yeah. nostalgia hotline here. Brad and I go back. I get a lot of good comments about the 70s and the 80s and the 60s. Brad remembers this, and this will never happen again. Remember when a bell would ring, the tenant would come out, pump your gas, clean your yeah. windshield, check your oil, bring your bring yeah. your chains, and sometimes give you green stamps? Look, that really happened when we were kids. Yeah, you know? yeah. I know. I, I, I remember there was one Chevron in Encino, or no, Tarzana, that they still did that. And the owner came out and he did all that stuff. He, uh, you know, checked under the hood, make sure you had, uh, you know, the window wash, uh, you know, soap and he checked your tires. He did all that. You know, that art is over. You know, everything is, everything is like, you know, there's hardly any, there's only one in Beverly Hills. My grandma used to take me to uh, the 76. It's, it's an old gas station. It, 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 like the architecture is amazing. 
and uh, we used to go there. They still pump gas for you, you know, but it's, you know, it's pricey. But everybody, you know, everybody gets out of the car, you know, and uh, pumps their own gas. But, um, you know, that's, you know, that's things have changed so much, man. It's, you know, and you know, it's what's concerns me the most in my business. And of course, you know, I, I walked in, but once in a while I get like a Taco Bell of driving. I'll, oh my God, you can smell it. You go in there and there was no one standing at the counter. Everything was kiosk. And the kiosk has 11 different languages. So if you're German, you're Spanish, oh, wow. Italian, obviously English, you got to go through the kiosk. But wonderful way to save money. You pay in the kiosk. And if you want, you know, obviously there's employees back there. Right. I, I heard or I read in Tables Magazine, I believe, that twenty that Japan is is experimenting with robotic bartenders. And wow. oh. it makes me nervous because it's a yeah. robot. Yeah, yeah. Look, yes. Looking like the kind of robots that were robots in the movie iRobot, very good film with Will Smith that came out about 15 years ago. So what they do is they'll ask you, they'll look at your face and they'll say, what, what's your name? Thank you for coming to the Shucks Tavern. Hi, I'm Brad. What's your last name? Brad Grumberg. And they look at your face and they get a complete composite of every single digital social outlet that you're on. And they'll, they could see in 1.3 seconds that you made a post on Facebook about going with your dad to get a, a haircut and a shave, I mean, a shave rather. And they'll say, Brad, well, how, was, how was your shave with Jerry the other day? And they could have that kind of conversation. Uh, I will say this. In my business, no robotic bartender no. will ever replace a human. Exactly. It's never going to work because it's your personality that brings people back. You know, your, your, your really bad jokes. Uh, you're, <laughs> uh, you know, you, 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 you know, you're just one, you are one of the greatest parts. You are Sam Malone. And I'm telling you, no, you are. You're, I watch you, remember? I, I'm there at like three in the morning and you got about 10 people and you're still, you're working the room, man. You're working the room. You're very good at what you do. And yeah, well, thank you. Let me cut you off like I always do. How does a robot read the room? But a That's robot a is not going to do it, man. And you know what? A lot of things, these uh, atomic cars, you know, I see them around L.A. No, you know, no one's driving them. I mean, what's going on in this world? I mean, this is the A.I., man. This is the artificial intelligence. And it's just uh, I don't like it, man. It's it's dangerous. It really is. You know, and, and by the way, when they do that thing with the with the face, I bet when when you come back to that bar, the robot knows what you're drinking. Probably yeah. something like that, too. Right? Oh, are you going to have the gin and tonic uh, there? Uh, uh, yeah. Fish? yeah, yeah, and they they'll they'll see you're an Arizona fan, so they'll ask about that. You could have a conversation with the robot, and they're going to improve that in the next twenty five to thirty years. And what it does is it eliminates jobs that yep. were around for hundreds of years because you're not paying the robot a wage. It's just someone, that, you know. But how are they going to break up a fight? You know? Yeah. Um, well, they're going to have empl- they're going to have some employees, of course. Well, what what are they going to have? Yeah, I, exactly. Some kind of security, but what you know, some girls or guys go in there to flirt with the bartender. How are they going to flirt with you? You know? Yeah. Brad, no, you look very good today. It looks like you lost twelve pounds. <laughs> what are you doing? You know? Well, great. It's many years away, but it's scary. It really is. Not many years you know, away. It's 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 no, happening, and, and I, mean, I get it. To, to I get it from a business standpoint, perfect but perfected. You know. Like those yeah. girls we had on our show, they were fantastic. Great okay. looking girls, great personalities. And I'm going to look at a fucking robot. I'm going to look uh, at a yeah. fucking, uh, you Guys know. go in to see girls like Ashley and Jade. Ashley at Chuck's, Jade over at Standard. And, and you know, you there, there's a certain amount of, you know, of, of flirting and and right. uh, sexual tension with bartending. It's good sexual tension. It's yeah. just like you in a lift. You know, they love going with you. Because you have a personality and you could talk to other people. And I'm sure you engage your your oh. clients and saying, hey, where are you going? What are you doing? Yeah. And whatever. And you, you make, if it's an eight minute drive or a 20 minute drive, you enlighten that eight minutes or 20 minutes. And that's, we can't lose that. But we're going it, to, it, it's heading that way. Concerns me. Just said you can't walk. You're a fast food guy. You know. Uh, Who may know? I, kiosk, I only, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. What are you talking about? Then you'll find a vegetarian fast food place. What are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, look at this. Check out this one. Remember this? Let's see. Oh, Look at wow. the McDonald's menu in 1970. 48 to 2. 48, 48 for a filet of fish. 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 Wow. 33 for a cheeseburger. Wow. 70 yeah, Brad, cents for a quarter pounder. Now, wow. you, could do, you could do, if those prices were now, you could do the sequel to The Whale in five minutes. Oh, God. Look at, and that board. 
Oh, I remember that board. But, you know, I worked at McDonald's. That was my first job. And uh, I got fired the next day because I was 15 and a half. Funny story. They, uh, I knew the owner of the McDonald's, the Lapati family. And this is uh, the uh, McDonald's in Encino and Haskell. And uh, you, you'd recognize it. And it's still there. And I remember them telling me, all right, get the paint. You're going to go paint the poles in the parking lot. And I want you to paint the bathroom door. So I, I finished all the, uh, all the, you know, the brown and the yellow. I finished all the poles. And then I went to the, the bathroom, the men's bathroom. Some guy just took a steamy one. Oh, and I had, a, I, had a, I had to paint the door. And I'm smelling this guy's shit. Oh, I'm sick to my stomach. And then the greatest thing is they gave me my check the next day. And they said, I'm sorry, we have to fire you. You're 15 and a half. You got to be 16. So. That's that was my McDonald's story. But of course, they pay me in food. So that was a really good thing. Brad and I never know what we're talking about. I show these memes and it's funny how the world is so circular and so close and six degrees of separation. I went to Val, uh, uh, to, to, to high school in the Valley for a year and I, went, I worked at McDonald's on Coldwater and Victory. And the owner's names were the Lopatties. And oh. Ben... Family. The Lapatties own that one too. And Ben Lapatti, if you ever met him, and he came in with his two sons, and it looked like this little, I can't think of the actor's name, but he had this voice like, You're not doing that right. So, <laughs> and his two fat sons. But one day I worked, I was working in the kitchen. Back then you did the six turning lane. So you're doing the burgers, and there was a kid that worked there named Darren Botner and my buddy Craig Persky. And we would take the burgers and we'd throw it to see if it would stick on the ceilings. Right? Oh, gosh. Well, Patty walks in with his two sons. Wow. Right? And we're waiting and we're talking. I said, oh, fuck. One of those, because we, we waited. At, we had it. We, we did a contest. We bet each other a dollar, you know, how long it would take the patties, the patties to fall off the ceiling. Oh, my God. Wouldn't you know the patty's sitting there talking to us, right? And he goes, you need to get faster when you're doing this. And a, I'm not kidding you. Brendan. A, pa a patty falls right in his fat fucking forehead. No, right. Funniest thing in the world. I dying. love it. We all right got to see the eyes for a week. We didn't get fired, but the laughter between two, three guys that are 16 years old was. We talk about that every time. You know, what's the chances of them walking in? We're looking up like that. They never saw the patties up there, but we knew right. hit him, hit him like right here. Oh. And then the bounce hit him in the nose and walked out. And just, what That's the crazy. hell is that? How do you? Oh my God! <laughs> oh to my this day, God. but we both worked with them, and they that La Patty family owned most of the McDonald's. You know which one they own? There was McDonald's. You live in L.A. on Canaan Road that was open twenty four hours on the one hundred and one in Canaan Road. So if you oh, came yeah. back from the beach, it's the first twenty four hour McDonald's. How much money they made? But those guys are loaded. Yeah, and yeah, I got those, to spend it with those the on top of the thing, and I hit the guy in the head. You're not going to tell that same story again with the uh, burger on the top of the ceiling. <laughs> no, That's, just, no, that was a funny. Let me explain how this. Did works. I tell that before? I mean, I want to tell you how it works because I'm. Did I tell that guy. before that story? I'm the fun. Yeah, no, no. You just kind of repeated the same story. Let me explain how it works. You are a great guy. You're a handsome guy, but when you tell a story and you killed it with it hit him on the face, right? And six, three sixteen year olds laughing. It the the story ends right there. Okay. <laughs> Don't go, Molly. You agree, Molly? Molly? Even Molly's upset with you. Yeah. Well, well this is the story. third time you brought the 106 year old woman on the podcast. So, <laughs> in four weeks, we got a so short picture. I, of think, it, I think you have early dementia. I really do because you, you bring up stuff every time. You say it's for our new Ready. audience. Ready. Okay. Look in the mirror. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting things right here. He goes, Brad brought that up three times from Casey Evans. I'm not <laughs> yeah, I never did. That. You know, I write everything down. I write everything down. It's good though. It's good that people notice what we talk about. But you're right. I, you're, I, I'll leave the comedy to you. You're funnier looking, and but it was a but. The, but the funny part of that story is that we both worked for the same guy, and we I both know. remembered him. You know, I you're think younger they than like I am. You're about four years younger than I am, and so you. Uh, yeah, the, well, the one in Con Cino, was it? Was, did you work on the one on White Oak and Ventura, or the one on on Haskell? Uh, I worked on the one. Uh, not on no, not on White Oak. The other one, Haskell. The okay. one in Encino, yeah. yeah, that Encino, the other way, yeah. But uh, we talked about COVID, and we bring up LA a lot. It's a shame what COVID did because I'm thinking about all the deli. Jerry's Deli went out of business I because know. of COVID. It just couldn't hang on long enough, and 
there was a Jerry's Deli right there I, on White Oak and Ventura, right near that McDonald's that you worked on. And I, I, I just think, man, you know, I, we don't have a lot of delis out here in Las Vegas. You sat in one of the best ones at me, the Bagel Cafe. Oh, yeah. But you're blessed to have so many great delis out there. And even the ones in the Valley, Brand Arts, yeah. you know, uh, do you, is I, Nate Nows still there in Beverly Hills? Nate Nows is still there. It was bought, Nate, Nate Nows and Apple Pan were oh. bought by Irving Azoff. He is a you know a very very well known uh, uh, music producer, and him and his wife bought because they they were going to tear it down. They were going to go out of business, so he saved those two mama papa places. And I was uh, I was at um, uh, I was at uh, uh, Nate Nals probably in the, within the last six months. It's still great. It's still great. But I I, I go to uh, Factors Deli. That's where I met uh, Laura Rosenstock, my new manager. I'm going to call her after I uh, talk to you for an hour. Um, and uh, we had a great, we sat on the patio and Factors has been there a long time. You know, the family, uh, uh, the uh, they're great people. And, uh, you know, a lot of the old timers used to meet there. You know, the Monty Halls of the world, you know. Yes, they all used to meet on Wednesday and they called it, I don't know what they called it. It was the guy's name in, in his memory. And they'd all sit at this one table, this big, long table, and they'd bullshit for hours. I love that stuff. We got to start that. You know, we got to start something like that. But one of my favorite, you, you're in Cooper and Kerber Enthusiasm, one of my favorite scenes he's ever done in 11 years or however many years, 20 years he's done the show, is he went to Cantor's one time with all these mentally challenged people. And, uh. and it was a fun, not any, did the, any, and the fact that Larry David's character, none of them being mentally challenged, they ran a car wash. He went there. He saw them sitting there and he sat there at the table. And you just, if you go to Cantor's Deli, which is on Fairfax in LA, everybody, it, for people that are not LA bound and like yeah. Brad and I are, it, it still has that same allure. I was there and I, I did a project with Brad a couple of years ago and I went in there and I had to see it and ate there at my friend Fat Jeff. Same, the, the same big salamis holding behind the deli. The bakery yeah. has these chocolate chip danishes. Still the same. They still have the same 105 year old waitresses. Yeah, and they still. And they yeah, still I, love I love the. I don't, love the smell of delis. I love the ambiance. Don't they? And they still have the kibitz room. You know, it, you know the other side there where people play the music. They have like live music after. Yeah, the the waitress is two hundred years old. It's it, it it's a it's a great. It's it, listen. They can never tear down Cantor's Deli. Never. They can't. Oh, no, hell no! I got to turn back to turn down Cantor's Deli, and they. Although I, we mentioned this before. I was so excited when they opened Cantor's here in Las Vegas and it lasted six months. Same people, uh -oh. same owners. It just didn't make it, you know. They put it in a, a really ritzy part of town in, in a mall and parking was tough. And, you know, uh -oh. it, it's something should just stay the same. I know you're trying to market your image and stuff like that. But um, also, you know, we have a deli, deli, right? Yep. Didn't you have stage deli? Didn't you have stage deli? We had inform shops. I don't know if it's still there or not. Um, a huge, a huge sub sandwich place here called Capriotti's in Las Vegas. There's got to be 50 units here. Went to LA and a few, and they closed. I mean, LA, there's Pink's so much in LA. Dogs? There's so many big. What about Pink's Hot Dogs came to Vegas? That lasted 10 minutes, right? That That's done. Yeah. And look I, at it in LA, right? Yeah. If you go to Pink's right now, it's almost 9 30 or whatever. Yeah. If you go to Pink's Hot Dogs, I guarantee there's a line uh, probably forming, right? I was there earlier this morning. Yeah, there was a line. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm telling you, uh, the gentleman that you introduced me to at the uh, Bagel Cafe, he has the Midas touch. And Zavis. give him a shout out. Give him a shout out. Savis is, is great. He's at that place 30 years. He yeah. came over from Greece and he married into a family, and the family helped him get this place going. He's got a few, a uh, few, few units, but it's, it's that that's got a great feel for it. Like great, you know. One thing you go in a restaurant and you you could attest to this. What's the size of the portions on the plate? And you have to admit, huge. You oh, could, they have a lot of to-go boxes going out of that joint. Trust me. Oh, and then and then they when you go over to the bakery, oh, oh. the big ding dongs and all that. But what you know it was so funny when I was talking to him, and I think you remember this. I brought up Bagel Mania, and his face dropped. He looked at me like he was going to kill me, and he started telling us a story about how they stole his, you know, all the bullshit. He's such a good guy. 
He's more successful than Bagel Mania, hands down. Better food, better employees, better everything. But it was funny. That was like the kiss of death for me. Everything was going well in the conversation until I went, "Uh, do you know a place called Bagel Mania? Oh, my God. All the white, all all the blood left his face. Yeah. And he's got that accent. I can't do his accent. But look, he's the epitome of success in this business, like my guys at Chuck's stuff like that is that consistency is everything in the restaurant business and he's got consistent employees consistent food consistent everything i mean you know what what i have to ask you this question to segue into something because it's it's, i've always thought this i never asked you on it when you have a good franchise in a movie and the biggest the biggest um product i'm going to tell you right now that failed was the original movie arthur 1981 was brilliant Brilliant. Yeah. John Gilks or John Gilgood, Liza Minnelli, Dudley Moore crushed it. The next yeah. one they did was so bad. Oh, it's like Dad. They pulled it from the theaters. Dad, you got to leave. Dad, I'm on a podcast. You got to get up and go. Go in the back. Can you go in the other room, please? Bring him on. No, no. He's he, he answered the phone. I told him, please, for the next hour, you can sit there. But yeah, sorry. So you what, signed the, one of these guys in a commercial that, that, that they do for uh, live with their moms, and they say, "Mom, more spaghetti." <laughs> yeah, dad got to leave. What a horrible oh, son. son. Jesus. Anyways, the problem is consistency. We're talking about how many times have you seen a movie, Brad, that was a great franchise, and the sequel was so god awful? Yeah, it's and the Arthur two was called Arthur on the Rocks, I believe. Mm-hmm. Minnelli, I'm obviously sure John Gilgood passed away yeah. before I do it. They brought the entire cast back. And even if the, if Dudley Moore was alive and he was when he was, you could tell how bad it was. He didn't even go see it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's that much in your business. Is it that much about the money? Because the only the all only people. sequel, and I'll shut up, that I thought was phenomenal was The Godfather Two. Godfather Two was great. Rocky Two was great. True. You know, so there's certain movies they should make sequels, and there's certain movies they shouldn't. And by the way, my my friend uh, Pete Siegel, who directed Tommy Boy and um, uh, uh, Twenty, was it the Sandler film Fifty First Dates? Um, he he just directed My Spy, and then he he just wrote My Spy Two, and I uh, did some voices for him uh, last week. Oh, is it funny? Oh, is it funny? You know that you know uh, Batista, Dave Batista. You know he was a wrestler. Love him. Oh yeah, he's yeah. talking about a Mar- big, big Marvel guy type guy. Yeah, he was so good, so funny. Uh, Ken Jung is in it. Craig Robinson. But oh my goodness, the stuff that I saw, I was on the, I was crying. It was so good. So everybody, oh, go man. see My Spy Two when it comes out. Really good. Yeah, it's really funny. I'm glad the business is starting to thrive again. Um, yeah. Well, that's not true. Well, you, I look. I mean, no, look, I mean, you what's, you. what's your new What's your new manager's name? Lala Rosenstock. What's her no, name? No, 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 no. Let's stop. Lara Rosenstock. Now, let me explain something to you. We haven't ratified the contract yet. Mm. We're voting, and a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people are voting no. And I'm telling you, it's going to take a long time to rev things up again. Everybody, I was talking to my buddy. Chucky Myers, great uh, musician, he thought, oh, you're, you know, oh, everybody must be back working. It doesn't work that way. To get these productions going again, you have to hire. Some people don't want to go to uh, New Mexico. They want, they got a job here in LA to be near their family. I mean, the bill, I'm being honest, the business is in shambles. It really is. It is. This whole strike could have ended in 10 minutes, but Iger and all his merry men and this one woman, they kept it going and going and going. 114 days, buddy. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm laughing the way you're you laughing at me. Iger and his merry men. Man. What a great I'm line. Man. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. You're a good friend. <laughs> you're a real putz. <laughs> you know show business. Your mom, God rest her soul, was in the business. Correct? My stepdad. And you your step loves our show now. He's 89 years old. He won an Emmy. He won an Emmy award for being a uh, on uh, the technical director on the on the greatest sporting event ever. One of them, the Miracle on Ice, and oh. he really misses. He he's one. Of, he's like you. He's so pissed off at everything that he would not even screen new shows because he goes, "If you, I, you know, he's the New Yorker and he's great." He goes, "If you watch Netflix, God damn it," he goes, "You're giving these people the leverage," you know, because. But people are going to watch and they're going to, 
The smartest thing the networks did yeah. during this whole thing is they put Monday Night Football on ABC. It's, it was indigenous to ESPN. Yes. Exactly. NBC put Notre Dame football. CBS put all these games, college football games, and massive ratings because they had the they had they had it. So, you know, um, unfortunately, sports uh, are they're not members of SAG. So, right, right. Um, but also, they I think they brought them back because some of these football games were streamed. Like on Thursday, isn't uh, the Thursday game streamed on uh, Amazon Prime? And they're bringing it back because they want the revenue, right? They want the revenue from all the commercials and stuff. Because a lot of the, you know, when you stream, there's hardly any commercials. It's yeah, it, well, listen, football is yeah. the number one watch thing. Anyway, right, it is. The top. If you look at if you look at the Nielsen ratings, yeah. the top ten shows in America every year, yeah. seven are football games. You know, it's just the way it is. We yeah. it, we we're, we're sports fanatics, and 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 that that's a good thing. Well, look, uh, I hope we all hope we talk about it for since this thing started when you guys walked in June or May, or rather that. We, we need you back. I want to see you on uh, Curb Enthusiasm, and you will meet with your potential new manager and strategize things. You know, it's it's yeah. it's it's rough, and you have family in the business, and and it's rough on everyone involved. Um, Every, and not just actors, and per, it's it's below the line. Those are the right. people that really suffer. So right. we'll see what happens. We'll see if we ratify it. It's close. Do you, uh, yeah. do, do you are you a fan of two part question? Uh, late night TV is the first part. And the second one is I'm so spoiled by Johnny Carson and David Letterman. I don't think anyone hits that standard. So the third part of this question is, I don't want you, I mean, you might be friends with some of these people. Does anyone hit that standard for you? Or is, is that a lost art? That's a lost art. I mean, I, I, I mean, Jimmy Kimmel is a nice guy. I don't think he's funny at all. And he, because the Academy Awards is on ABC, he's going to be the host again. He was terrible. He was awful. Um, then we got uh, Jimmy Fallon. He's all right. I like Jimmy Fallon because he's a, like a big fan. You know, like when he interviews some of these people, you can tell he's a big fan, like the people that are watching. Um, who else? Um, oh, um, Stephen Colbert. On the, you know, he took over for Letterman. I'm not yeah, happy. I'm not a big, you know. Letterman came on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert about a week ago. That was interesting. Letterman... Letterman, I like Letterman a lot, but he's kind of lost his uh, his zest. You know, he's gotten older. You know, some of his jokes don't work anymore. But I still love him. You know, he's he's yeah, a legend. Too. I love I love the story. Please go back and watch our our show three weeks ago with Carrot Top. Carrot Top talks about being on Letterman. I'm not, uh, all I have to say is watch yeah his stories about Letterman and Leno, who was another one that that was a rivalry back in the day in the in the 80s and 90s or actually yeah. 90s and early 2000s when Johnny Carson retired. Um, I like James Corden. He was only one of all those guys you mentioned I thought was yeah. – I like Craig Ferguson. I don't know what the hell happened to him. He's hard you know to understand because he was so Scottish. You know who got boned? I think he could have been the biggest and the best. Conan O'Brien. So that. funny. Great. Leno it effed him. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe that Leno came back after he retired. I mean that was so. When people retire, you know, let's go. To, let's go to the sports analogy. When you retire, Michael Jordan, then he went to the Wizards, right? And he blew out his knee or whatever. Why do you have to come back? It's over, Michael. You hit the shot in Utah, six championships. Walk away. It's just like Tom Brady. What are these people doing? Yeah, I, I disagree with you. I yeah. disagree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, why do you I'll, disagree? With why me? I'll tell you. Yeah. First of all. When Jordan, when Brady came back, Brady came back at a very high level, okay, and and he's never he went to the playoffs every year with Tampa and did the same thing with New England. Look at New England now; they can't get it out of there. So it's not fair. They say Michael Jordan and Tom Brady were quoted saying the biggest highs in our life is walking into that stadium or that arena and hearing those fans. And these guys are zillionaires outside of the game. That's like telling you to quit acting at sixty. But I'm you, not it, it, you, because I'm not you don't get that me. kind of. You don't, you don't get. I, I get this. If you come back and you and, and and you if you left the game and you stunk when you left the game, why come back? That's your ego. But you come back and you're still winning championships and still. Con Michael Jordan averaged 26 points a game with the Wizards and was still at a high level. I understand where you're coming from with the ego I, go away. You know, Aaron Rodgers is one that you know I I, I questioned. Oh my he didn't god, he retired. Brett Favre was one I questioned. Um, 
But I disagree with you. If you still get that high and you can still perform at that level. But you're taking the spot of a younger guy. Oh, fuck that. The younger guy. Come on. When you retire, I got, look, okay. Jordan Love, he came up, right? They, you know, right? Aaron Rodgers went to the Jets. Jordan Love stepped in. You got to, let let me explain something to you. The window closes in life. That's how it works. And you know what? You move on to another chapter in your life. I I disagree. Jordan Love, I watched that game. Hold it, hold it. How about Muhammad Muhammad Ali? In the corner of the He should have retired. Stop retired. Stop talking. Muhammad Ali, Caesar's Palace, Larry Holmes pummeling him, pummeling him. And he's turning around to the ref, please stop this. This is my hero. And he kept pummeling him. Okay, what did Muhammad you know what? Ali have Listen, to come back for? Why? Bring your dad back in. I want to talk no. to him. Hey, you make make no your argument, argument, Brad. Your Brad was argument. guys retiring and coming back. Muhammad Ali never retired. He just kept going. He did so your retire. argument is shit. Yes, he did. You stop talking for a second. Jesus. Tom, name a year that Tom Brady ever had a bad year. He went to the playoffs 18 Tom straight years. And so you're giving me bad examples. Never going to win another Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers is never going to win another Super Bowl. Do you understand that? You don't know that. I know that for a fact. Yes. Okay, you know. You know. Okay. So you 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 know that for a fact. You're a there. You're, you know. You're, you you're Nostradamus. Okay. I'm so telling I'm, you. I could end it on this. Jordan I, Love had a m- masterful game last night against the Chiefs yeah. and is playing great. And all he does is praise Aaron Rodgers for the tutelage. And Aaron Rodgers left. The kid played three years. Wait a minute. Rodgers sat for three years under Brett Favre. Okay. Right. And he came in and played terrific. They're, they're, and it, if they don't give uh, rookie quarterbacks and rookies anymore because of the money they make. They don't give that kind of, uh, of, of patience, this and that. Go back to David Letterman for a second. I got to get something <laughs> off my chest because I want to, sure. I want to, I don't, don't want to argue with you because I get hungry. Okay. And then if I get hungry, I'm going to eat like you. Letterman was so brilliant that these guys don't have your Brad Grumberg is quick witted. That's what makes you funny. Okay. Off the top of your head. Uh huh. Thank you. I'm watching Letterman at the end of his career, and Warren Beatty walks out. He sits in the chair, and Warren Beatty doesn't do interviews. Right. The great actor Warren Beatty, everybody from Reds, Heaven Can Wait for You, younger people. Shampoo. Right. Oh, yeah. You might know him. Sits in the chair, and the first thing Letterman says is, he goes, are you still banging Madonna? Oh. <laughs> I go, I'm, on my, I'm watching the Vicky years ago. We both fall off the couch. You know? Oh, that's funny. So look on, on, on Warren Beatty's face. Talk about the blood leaving his face like Savas did when you asked about bagel mania. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, there's silence. And he goes, everyone knows you're sleeping with Madonna. It's okay that she's younger than you. He goes, I would too, if I had the opportunity. And it was just great. You oh, don't that, see that nowadays in these late yeah, night guys. They're yeah. too afraid. Well, culture, they're too afraid to offend anybody. Politically correct. <laughs> everybody has got to chill out. It's a joke. Let's have some fun. And, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg said something so poignant about life. The, the pendulum in life swings left, right, and then comes back to the middle. I'm telling you, it's time. It's time to laugh again. We need to laugh. And then, you know, you make fun of somebody and they're, oh, my God, that was so mean. Yeah, da, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I go, shut the fuck up. It's a joke. Now, if you offend somebody as a comedian, and you know their kids are getting made fun of at school and all that stuff. Then you stop. You stop. You, you know? want to offend somebody? Look at this meme. Yeah, show me. If a man speaks in the forest and there is no women there to hear, dot dot dot. Is he so oh, wrong? It's so wrong. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're a you're a married man. Beautiful Vicky, she runs the show there. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Are you yeah. kidding me? She she has a final say. I don't she runs the show, but she has a final. She's the words of wisdom. I'm the loose cannon, and she always seems to bring me down to that to that happy medium. And uh, right. but I always said this in any relationship you've had girlfriends, even your relationship with your parents or your family, it's the two C's. Would you agree with that, Brad? That it's compromise and communication yes. in any relationship. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It's not, and you know, there are certain relationships where people rule rule with an iron fist. I can't stand that. If you're married and you have a partnership, you 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 work as partners. That's how uh, you know it's not easy. That's why I'm not married. But you know, I 
But you, you know what? Yeah. I've been talking like you tell me. I love her. I love Stop her because talking. she got you off the streets of love. Thank God. Stop talking. And this is the this is the biggest testament I could ever make to you. Here we go. When I'm not feeling good physically or mentally, Brad Grunberg brings you up. And then I'm not the first person. You could talk uh, to Kat. I'll bring out names. Kathy Ziegler. A lot of people that use. So Brad Grunberg misses calling and being a therapist. Phenomenal. The second thing is the fact that you're not married is a fucking travesty because the way you think about people the fact that you're not a dad you know how lucky and I'm, I'm getting all gushy here you know how lucky your dog is to have you and your parents you made the choice not to get married but you could still get married okay of course, of course. that 106 year old woman would take you in a minute <laughs> oh you're funny does she have money <laughs> I, I, oh, I, uh, no it's funny you say that i i did a couple bits with her which i'm going to post uh, i think you're going to like them but uh, yeah, you know, I love people and I, I have a big heart. Uh, re, you know, I told you just recently, I got rid of a lot of people in my life and it's the best thing I ever did. And I waited too long and you know who your friends are. You are, you're like a brother. And I, I'm so glad I could be there for you when you, you know, you were going through a, a tough time. You asked my advice. I gave you my advice and I hope it helped because you just, well, yeah, I know. That's not, uh, but, uh, but well, no, I mean, let me ask you, that, you a personal question uh, in front of America. Um, I'm sorry, you're, sorry, a, you're a catch. You're not a bad looking guy. You groom yeah, yourself. Man. You know, I don't like I don't like so much your dietary habits because I'm concerned <laughs> about you. But if I was gay, life, I think I would date you. Well, hang on a sec. I, I'm going to I'm just going to ask you because why not? We're we're transparent here and, we're, and it's all about honesty. Do you go on any of these sites, the J dates, the match dot com to try and find a woman or are you just Hope that you meet someone in your lip. Hmm. I'm not kind of old school. I I have, but I haven't met anybody. I I've gone on lots of dates, but I have a big heart. And what I, this is what happens with me. I date a girl for like six months, and I have a six month rule. After six months, the water settles, and everybody becomes who they really are. You know, at the beginning, you know, you're texting. Oh, I had the greatest time last night. And with me, oh, you're the greatest lover. You have a large manhood. See, I went to that again. I, I wanted to see if you're awake. Um, but no, what happens is after six months, the water settles. And a lot of these girls, they take me for granted. And that's it for me. When you take me, it's like a, a stake in my heart, you know, because I always ask a girl. I think we you've uh, been around me when I ask the girls, nice guys or bad boys. And I want to see what they say to that because a lot of them, the young girls go, oh, I like bad boys. What's wrong with me? You know, I go, you're going to be 40. And if you're still going out with a bad boy, you're in big fucking trouble. And uh, I ask girls in the car, in my lift, you know, nice guys are bad boys. Because it's it's definitely, I mean, I learned that at the Tropicana, female mud wrestling. These girls would go out the biggest dirt bags, biggest scumbags. And they'd always break up with them. And, oh, I think I told you, did I tell you the story about when I went nose to nose with this guy? Okay, I'm going to tell you the story. So this one girl named April, sweetest girl in the world, she comes to work. And then she said, oh, I broke up my boyfriend. He's such an asshole. The boyfriend comes in that night. Now, we, we allow no boyfriends in the club during working hours because the girls get intimidated by looking over at their boyfriend and he like gives them a look like, what are you doing? Why are you letting that guy grab your ass? You know? So this asshole comes in and he starts tipping her best friend in front of her to get back at her. So she's screaming, uh, Johnny cocktails, get him the fuck out of here. God damn it. Brother. So I go, Hey buddy, come here. I, I got to talk to you. He goes, what do you want? I go, it's time for you to go. He goes, I'm not going anywhere. And we go nose to securities around me. And I go to the security guy. I go, call 911. We're calling an ambulance for this guy. Listen to me, motherfucker. You got one punch and I'm going to fucking kill you. Get the fuck out of here. He backed off. He left. Now, here's the bad part. The next day, he's driving her brand new Mercedes and drops her off at work and drives off. I go, April, what the fuck? I put my fucking ass on the line for you and you, well, he came over and we had makeup sex. Last time I ever did that. And I will never, ever do that again. You know, if I you know, remember, you know what I would have said? 
Yeah, what would you say? Why don't you come over to my house and we could have first time sex? <laughs> That's true. I, I that, yeah. My, my sister's a beautiful woman, single. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife. Wait, wait. Everyone who watches us, which, what we do is we take, gotta meet I take her. this podcast and I put it on YouTube. So I put it on my big screen TV set, like you when you came over to my house. Yeah, right. And they all say, "How's Brad still single?" And my sister had the greatest line. What she goes. Say? He probably meets women that are vegans, and that's it. That's a deal breaker. Ah, I love what a great it. line my sister has. He goes, he's adorable. He lives in Los Angeles. There are plenty of women. Did you ever go to the Stephen Wise Temple dance when you were a kid? Yeah, all the broads over there were, that were absolutely phenomenally rich dads. You know, I come was, on. I was, I was bar mitzvahed Stephen S. Wise Temple. That's not the question I asked you. There were 13. Know, you then. asked me if I went to the dance. dances there. Stephen's Wise Temple. I just told you yes, I did. Okay. You didn't I go to the did you, did you go to the dances there? there. Say, when yeah. I worked at Mom's Saloon, you wouldn't believe my people would say, hey, I've been seen the last couple of nights. Well, Stephen Wise had a dance in this and that. And yeah, go, yeah. They had great dances, and there's a there was a lot of hookups in, in, in that place at the time. And right. Ugh. Look, you know what? My my uh, my goal is to find you. A woman that likes to eat fast food. That's what we have to do. <laughs> or a girl that works at a fast food. I'm I'm in love with this girl at Chick-fil-A who takes my order every time I go in. <laughs> so I might ask her out. She's I think she's like in her 20s. They That's love okay. you. I guarantee you, you're the only guy that walks into a fast food place. You're the guy. You're the guy that goes yeah. to a drive-thru at a fast food place <laughs> and tips the person in the window. I do. I do. I do. You ever see a look on their face when you know, yeah. you know, you know, you know, it's funny. There, there's an old, I know you're not a fan of Kevin Klein, but Kevin Klein had a great line in the movie, Dave. He goes, you ever look at the person's face when they get a job, the expression on their face, that look of elation and the self-esteem is up and the confidence. The look on those people's faces when you give them a tip in a fast food place oh. makes it. People, I'm telling you, throw pe if you're at McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or any fast food place you go to, yeah. Throw the person in the window a tip of a dollar or two dollars. You're making their day. What the? Oh, absolutely. Who gives a shit? It's two dollars. You know. I don't, I don't talk about what I do, but I'm gonna for this because the the subject matter. So the girl that I like at Chick Fil A, I took out a twenty. I gave it to her. She looked at me like, "Oh my god, thank you so." Much. She was elated. Like, I I mean I like I bought her a million dollar house. I gave her twenty bucks because she always took my order. She was always sweet. Always with a smile, and she helped me. Like if I'm using my points, and I said, "You always," and I told her, and she goes, "Why?" You get, and I go, "You always make me smile when I come here," and that's it. Love it. You can't um, take it with you. I mean, we're, listen, you're a millionaire. I'm not, but yeah. But no. the bottom line, I know we're both we're, we're but we're happy in love. No, we are happy in what we're we do. Working steps, <clears throat> but we we're happy. You know? Yeah, that, oh. I make a living. I'm lucky. My wife we're, makes a living, but you know, I made a living. And, yeah, and I, I, I still make happy. Happy. and you still need to bartend, and I still love doing it. Um, right. We are heading into the home stretch. We have five weeks left in the NFL season before we get out of here. I want to show you a meme because I, I root for your Wildcats. Obviously, my son has something uh, about yeah. that also. But Big Max, how about this? Bow down to a nation greater than yours. Look uh. at that. Look at Snoop back in the day, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, all Raider fans, and the Raiders have to win for their next five games to have a shot at the playoffs. Yeah. Let, let's do it. We we we've had a rough run the last twenty years. I'm gonna. Oh, by the way, oh, oh, by the way, did you? I sent you the picture from John Orlando. I was just gonna go there. Oh, um, John that. Orlando. Brad has introduced me to a lot of great people since I since we've reconnected. But one of the greatest people is Tony Orlando's son, John. Who was the just an apple off the old tree of his dad, Tony? We had on our second show, I believe. John's one of these guys that knows everybody, and and Brad sends me a text saying, "Don't get jealous." And I open it up, and John's in a booth at the Pac-12 championship game with Mark Davis, Marcus Allen, Tim Brown, and you Vince can tell Coleman. Me, Vince Coleman. Vince Coleman. But he's with the three Raiders that you know. He's with two Hall of Fame Raiders and Marcus right. and Tim Brown and the owner of the Raiders. And you can see they all like John. John's a likable guy. And he John is. was nice enough. He, he owns a studio called Sticky Paws where he was nice enough to give us a studio where we had one of our best interviews with Carrot Top. So, yeah, 
I, I live my life vicariously through John Orlando. And by the way, look, John Orlando I, is my wife be... used to look like Vanessa. She still looks great. Is that her name? We have oh, her his show, fiance Vanessa. is beautiful. Vanessa is, is is she's more sweet inside than beautiful outside. But I will tell you so this. Oh, John. Uh, yes, John's a handsome guy. But I will tell you this. Um, John is going to come on the show because Please. he has one of the greatest stories I have ever heard. When he lived in L.A., this story is so epic, okay? He's going to come on and tell the story. You're like, no, that didn't happen. But when you hear the story, you're like, how could he make this shit up? It Can we get was, him on next week? Uh, yeah, I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Yeah, sure. Because yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be great. You know, his we'll dad. Get you, we'll get rid of you. And then he'll replace you, and then he'll tell the story. It'd be great. Yeah. Well, I'll get rid of you and put John Hyatt in. At least we won't have a camera. By the way, John Hyatt is the greatest. He took me to the greatest night of my life, to the Spearmint Rhino. What the fuck happened there? What, wait, you know, yeah. I, I don't, I, 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 you know, we have a perfect show and then I fuck. Yeah, what are you doing? Mind. Yeah, what are you doing? What's what that? are you doing now? I don't know. So I have no yeah. idea what's going on. We have no thing. Actually, I'll, I'll do is this. We have, a, we, have a, we have some music playing because we're, we're talking about you at the Spearman Rhino, but get us <laughs> out of here because this becoming, this is a great show and it has yeah. been a great show. Yeah. But the okay, technical I gotta tell nightmare you, that okay. is Eric Snyder. I'm going to end on this. I'm going to end on this. John, Orlando, I mean, John Hyde took me to all these strip clubs. He took me to the Palomino. He took me to uh, Honey's, this new club. But the girls at the Palomino, it was so amazing. She, uh, I met these two girls from Utah. And they say, oh, we just moved to town. We're roommates. And we are having such a good time. I go, are, are you guys Mormon uh, from uh, Utah? They look me right in the eye and go, not anymore. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Is that great? great? Oh, my wow, God. I love, I love it. it. That what a way great. to end the show. Oh, my God. Dave Linden, 38's in the books. Take us home, baby. Hey, it was great seeing you, Brad. You, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic to be back on. We're both feeling better. Yes. Um, you have a great week. And let's plan. Fatfish, Fatfish fans, we're, we're planning on getting Johnny Orlando on soon because you don't love this guy. I will. I will talk to him for next week. You got Thanks, it. buddy. You've been listening to the Fat Fish Podcast, heard on all your favorite platforms. Until next time. <laughs> hey, I miss you, Nanny. See you, buddy. He misses you, too.